Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to decisive game of the old tournament between two leaders um, in the Altibox Norway Chess uh, Tournament. Alireza Firuzia, who's gonna play as White and Magnus Carlsen, who's gonna play as Black. Nothing to add here, two leaders, who's gonna win the tournament? Let's see uh, on the board. We have Knight F3, Zuckertort opening by Magnus Carlsen. Some sources claims that um, this is the Reti, however Reti actually comes by uh, d5 and then we have uh, as white the ready opening uh, this would be Zuckertort uh, opening because Johannes Zuckertort was the first in the 19th century uh, who started a uh, work on this opening we have knight f6 we have g3 pretty standard c5 making a space for the for the knight and also make a potential uh, outpost and control over the, the d4 square. We have bishop g2, knight c6 as planned. We have castle and now e5. And it's kind of Marozzi bind um, as white play against Sicilian defense uh, where we have the, the total control of d4. And if white want to play d4, on some point, of course, uh, it needs um, some preparations. Uh, so we have e4. Now this pawn, uh, stays a bit behind. Magnus Carlsen brings it to d6 uh, and he doesn't mind that it's uh, a bit of weakness as the pawn on d file, white pawn on the d file, it's still um, on the play so it cannot be, you know, attacked by the by the rook. And it's quite, pretty much a very uh, solid structure, kind of stonewall, uh, but of course stonewall we would have on the, on the light square, um, so, so it's uh, a bit, you know, different. Uh, and here there is the, the one thing, this pawn is under attack. So this game, you know, was played a couple of times. We had the rook e1, knight c3 or d3. All of these moves actually defend them, the e4 pawn. But Alireza went for c3. So he doesn't mind that Magnus can take this pawn. Now, is it possible to take that pawn? Actually, yes, it's, uh, it's actually the best move in the position. However, Magnus didn't play that. He probably was afraid that this is some uh, home preparation. Uh, also, this would give White some initiative and Magnus is the one who would like to actually sacrifice the pawn uh, and get the initiative in the game. So, um, you know, opposite, he doesn't feel uh, so comfortable about that. A d4 would happen, c takes on d4, c takes on d4, maybe a 5 grabbing some, some space, maybe bishop g4 also was possible, um, d5, knight e7 and so on let's say knight c3 exchanging and this position is pretty much complicated this pawn gonna uh, get some support and there are already some ideas for white so for example this knight uh, could try to jump for example to e6 and if it's taken by the bishop in the exchange uh, this pawn actually could be very annoying for the short time together with the queen on a4 uh, that can be pretty annoying the king probably would not castle anymore uh, so that's one of the options of continuing one of the plan of course it has to be uh, calculated more precisely but there are already some um, ideas with the high initiative here and there also uh, let's say knight h4 was, would, would be possible uh, with the idea of bringing the bishop to g5 pin this knight and uh, maybe exchange this knight and then the queen could attack uh, through h5 and g6 would, would not be possible because always this knight could take actually the pawn and win the rook so uh, a lot of interesting ideas. This is why Magnus decided, okay, uh, I'm, I don't go for that. I just play solid. So we have g6, we have d4, c takes on d4, c takes on d4, and now bishop g4 uh, threatening already take that pawn. And here uh, Alireza could go for, for d5, uh, moving the, the knight to, to e7 uh, maybe was possible, but too passive, but knight d4 would be very interesting. Uh, and let's say after bishop g5, pinning this knight as well, bishop g7, knight b to d2, and everything is like uh, pretty much solid. Uh, black can simply castle h3 this bishop has to do something probably just exchange and after knight f3 uh, there is already some threat of picking up this knight so queen b6 um, and after rook e1 defending that pawn um, rook f to c8 getting to the 
uh, to the open file maybe bishop e3 uh, and focusing on on this uh, on this knight so what black could do is exchange the knights with check and then move the queen uh, or maybe play something like a knight d7 and this bishop could support the um, the knight on d4 which is also possible so this would be the options uh, alireza firuja just decided that he want to exchange as much as he can uh, and you know the, the the best option for that is of course uh, d takes on e5 and that's also uh, gives the opportunity to exchange the queens uh, we have d takes on e5 and now knight c3 first we have bishop g7 h3 kicking the bishop bishop f3 and now this is the time uh, to actually exchange the queen so queen d8 rook d8 and now bishop f3 uh, we have also castle king g2 uh, and now knight d4 very natural outpost for the knight it's not uh, as perfect as against you know uh, ariantari because black still have the knight still have the dark square bishop uh, but at least the knight cannot be attacked by the pawns we have bishop g5 now pinning the the knight uh, and h6 and here bishop could actually retreat to e3 but after uh, let's say knight c2 attacking this bishop and the rook the rook has to be moved uh, so let's say to d1 and after exchanging white would have this double pawns uh, not a dream position uh, it's still playable but definitely uh, not a dream position this is why bishop f6 bishop f6 uh, and now how to continue the position is nearly symmetrical the opposite a uh, color bishops uh, we have the knights and um, knight e2 for example exchange the knights that would make uh maybe closer to the draw as the as the opposite colors bishop actually are, are very very drawish as they cannot interact with each other um, ginger gm said like it's with his um, wife or ex-wife i don't remember uh, that they just you know uh moving somewhere around but they never meet um, you know on the same square so uh, that was kind of joke knight e2 is doesn't really work uh, the point is after knight f3 uh, why to exchange the knights if we can exchange and make some some imbalance king f3 and then this rook gonna get the really active you know second uh, second uh, rank so before let's say rook f to d8 already um, you know double the rooks and after let's say knight c1 just to get under control d2 that could be the best option uh, rook b2 now knight b3 so uh, double the rooks on the on the second rank would not be possible uh, but still rook d3 with check uh, king g2 now rook c3 and the rooks can be actually double on the on the second rank this way and um, otherwise okay white would have to sacrifice some some one of the pawns that they doesn't even have a choice rook um f to c1 and after um whatever th this this pawn gonna be lost or this pawn gonna be lost let's say if the knight then of course this pawn gonna be lost in if the rook it's a little bit more complicated because rook a2 maybe rook c7 b6 uh and, um, and yeah black just won the pawn and and so on so that's not really the greatest idea to try to exchange the knights this is why alireza went to the central d5 square uh, and now we have rook d6 so magnus uh want to bring the rook to the sixth rank uh, and then it he can do two things first he can double the rooks on them on the c file but also he anticipating another plan of alireza firuja uh, and he want to keep the rook on the sixth rank and you will see um what what is the idea here uh, pretty soon we have rook a to c1 so it seems like alireza got the control over a c file but magnus didn't say the last word we have bishop d8 now preparing a5 in the future rook f to d1 and now king g7 first uh, and now alireza say okay f5 is possible a knight e3 if f5 is played then uh, after exchanging the point is that this knight actually can jump to c4 with the attack on the rook and also attack on this pawn and once this pawn is eliminated it cannot be supported by the by the pawn maybe by the bishop um, then also this this knight is hanging so a lot of calculations here this is why magnus first play rook a6 uh, we have a3 uh, and now h5 
Uh, H5, that knight cannot come to G4 to attack the, the, this pawn, however, still can come to C4. So now the, the pawn is under attack. Bishop has to retreat, so F5 was still not played. Bishop F6, uh, it's a bit, you know, bad bishop here in this case, uh, however, it's not so bad. We have h4, just blocking any potential h4 move by Magnus Carlsen, and also setting up a completely symmetrical kingside, um, you know, structure. It's very easy, actually, to, to draw that. The point is, white still have to exchange the rooks and the knights. If the knights and the rooks are exchanged, that could be a dead draw. Uh, we have rook c8, so Magnus getting now um, to the to the c file. Uh, we have knight e3 going back, and now rook a to c6. So as you see, after all these maneuvers, is Magnus who controls the c file. Uh, we have rook rook c6, rook c6, and now rook d3 with the idea of exchanging the the rooks. We have bishop d8. Magnus uh, again trying the same plan. Uh, we have bishop d1. Alireza saying, "Okay, uh, I'm gonna you know follow you uh, in the in the mirror uh, and let's see what you get here." And now rook c1 getting to the to the to the first rank we have bishop b3 asking magnus hey magnus maybe you want to exchange uh, the bishop for the um, for the knight uh, but magnus is not interested he thinks that okay in this kind of position uh, his knight gonna be superior and it's not so easy actually to remove that knight uh, we have b5 by magnus so magnus starts to squeeze and block them the queen side uh, and keep more and more pressure on, on Alireza. Uh, and now we have Rook D1 asking to exchange the Rook. So Alireza uh, definitely wants to play, uh, is playing for a draw. Now, uh, very interesting that Black could try go for something like Knight B3, but it's very, very complicated line. It looks like Black gonna win the pawn. However, not really, because uh, White would get the pawn back and at the same time would exchange a lot of pieces. So rook d8 let's say uh, and now the point is rook b1 winning that pawn it cannot be easily defended but white always have answer like rook d3 and after rook b2 then knight d1 with the attack on the rook so rook b1 and now knight c3 uh, forking this rook and the, and the pawn so that that is the trick and the game still can get very com uh, very very complicated uh, of course going to to a1 doesn't really work because white simply wins the the pawn back and still defend a3 uh, but very interesting uh, variation could happen after rook e1 uh, knight b5 and now knight c5 with the the attack on the rook and on this pawn so the pawn can be won by by black uh However, after rook d5, knight e4, rook e5, uh, it's a it's a very tricky. Uh, after king f6, w white uh, can draw very easily uh, and play just rook d5. And this is the the, the draw. Uh, it's very difficult to actually make any advantage. Uh, rook e8 would be very very tricky because now after rook e2 uh, there is of course uh, some threat so um, king f1 doesn't work king f1 doesn't work because of the check and winning the rook okay f takes on g3 and winning the rook so that's not possible king g1 would have to be played but still knight g3 uh, and after exchanging the rooks uh, king f1 a6 now a6 now, uh, knight c7, and this knight is under attack, so knight d4, and at the end, it's um, the material is equal, the position is still complicated, end game with the, with the knights, that, that would be the nightmare I already commented on two games uh, with, the, with the end game with the knights, and that was, you know, one of them took me 40 minutes and one over 30 minutes as well, so wow, I'm, I'm glad they, they didn't go for, for this variation. Uh, but as you see, very, very complicated, very complex position. Magnus decided, okay, he wants to keep as many pieces on the board as possible. So we have rook c8. Uh, bishop is under attack, so bishop a2. We have a5, continuing squeezing, rook d3, with the idea of exchanging the rooks. We have a4, and now if Alireza goes for rook c3 immediately, the problem is that after rook c3, b takes on c3, knight e2 goes after that pawn, 
um, and it's again it's a very very complicated difficult to calculate but black stands better uh, knight d5 defending that's possible but then bishop a5 is coming and continue the the attack uh, white can play c4 uh, of course uh, moving the, the pawn doesn't work uh, because simply uh, this pawn can be captured for free uh, exchanging it's also in favors of, of white so rather something like knight c1 attacking this bishop uh, and then after c takes on b5 knight a2 uh, b6 and this bishop has to be exchanged for this pawn or maybe knight before it's also possible but doesn't really matter this way or another um this pawn is very dangerous so bishop b6 now and after let's say knight d3 simply bishop d4 uh, maybe f3 and it looks like okay this bishop can pick up this pawn it's possible this knight can pick up this um, this pawn uh and uh, and so on but for now this knight is doing a really great job look at this this knight control all the squares uh, which could be potentially used for the for the attack of this pawn so this bishop would have to make a really um, a lot of moves just to get to the to the pawn but at the same time this bishop uh, if the knight is moved then gonna gonna jump to b2 so this is you know some stalemate kind of situation but black stands uh, slightly better here this bishop gonna be uh, in this case um, slightly better so this is why we have king f1 um, defending e2 so the knight cannot jump and potentially attack uh, c3 this is the idea we have bishop b6 and here rook c3 and magnus carlsen actually said that in the interview that he was good you know after this uh, rook c3 business because uh, this is in favor on, on of, of him uh alireza gonna have two pawns um another move was rook c3 b takes on c3 and two pawns on the dark square and he has a dark square bishop it's a it's a you know a pretty good advantage for him uh it's of course not winning immediately uh however he feel that it's uh, you know pretty good chances for him knight b3 was played by magnus carlsen now if you want to take them the knight uh it's not possible but not because of the uh, of this advancement because of course it can be stopped but rather uh, just continuing pushing on the on the king side f5 and after exchanging uh, let's say knight b2 the problem is these pawns are on the, on the dark squares and this pawn actually uh, blocks everything so you cannot even move now with the support of the knight it looks like it's okay but still it's not bishop c5 attacking this pawn and what you're gonna play next you're gonna push it's possible but then bishop a3 and now if you move the the knight then of course you're gonna lose that pawn uh, and if you don't and you play a5 then you're gonna lose the piece and yes white gonna be first with the uh with the promotion but it's not enough bishop c3 winning this very important pawn and after a7 b2 uh promotion another promotion uh of course with check black gonna win with extra bishop and another pawn which gonna of course uh promote um to the queen as well uh, so this is why we have king e1 by alireza firuzia bishop c5 going after that pawn and now knight c2 defending uh, and here again in interview magnus said he should go for um, f5 and continue the pressure uh, continue the pressure of course white could play something like knight before and it's not so easy how he continued the pressure because if the the king go to g6 how to continue this bishop can stay on this annoying diagonal and it's not so clear actually how to advance with the pawns on the uh, playing e4 yeah it's possible uh but it's still you know very very tricky position uh but that was magnus idea uh he decided that he going for the pawn be because in this position he can win the pawn so knight c1 with the attack on the bishop and also threatening uh the check and the double attack on the on the f2 and it cannot be defended of course uh, we have bishop d5 and now knight d3 as planned king e2 knight f2 bishop c6 now get going after and uh, the light square pawn so ali reza of course have the bishop light square bishop which can uh, you know counterplay uh, and now f6 and now the point is that this pawn cannot actually be taken because after knight e4 king f3 
uh, knight c3 and this bishop is under attack and cannot pick up another pawn so uh black would be in the very very comfortable position with two extra pawns of course that that would be winning so this is why we have knight e3 now blocking um the side the line of sight for the for the knight the knight is under attack and magnus has to retreat with the knight way where to retreat knight h1 world champion find the found the square for the for the knight with tempo with the attack on the on the pawn so we have knight f1 defending uh, and now bishop a3 winning that pawn uh, but of course uh, at the same time these pawns as are, are lost so that's the exchange all the queen side pawns we have bishop b5 bishop b2 bishop a4 bishop c3 and now king f3 maybe going after that um that knight so we have bishop d4 now taking under control f2 uh, and now g4 exchanging even more pawns h takes on g4 king takes on g4 knight f2 with check and now king f3 uh king h6 we have knight g3 now taking under control the h5 so the king cannot advance and now knight d3 by magnus carlsen we have bishop e8 so ali reza firuzia still fighting his plan is actually to go for h5 exchange more pawns and get to the drawing position we have knight f4 magnus also fighting for the h5 we have knight e2 trying to exchange them the knights uh, and at that time it would be already a draw after having you know uh opposite colors bishop uh so so let's say knight e2 king e2 just if you don't believe f5 e takes on f5 g takes on f5 king f3 and this king gonna stay on the light square the black cannot do much about that uh if if there is some move like like e4 then this this king will be happy on f4 and so on and this pawn always can advance to h5 and the king cannot advance too much uh, to the position because this pawn gonna be uh dangerous also in the future so uh, of course the bishop will will control but this is uh this is considered as a draw uh it it's most of the variations lead to a draw according to the at least stockfish uh, we have knight e6 magnus of course knows about that so he avoid to exchange the the knights we have bishop f7 kicking the knight even further knight c5 remaneuvering still and now knight g3 again getting control on the h5 so the pawn can be pushed we have bishop c3 and finally ali reza uh, pushed and now we have bishop e1 and here is a bit tricky uh, position imagine you are ali reza firuzia you want to draw that game and uh you have only one way uh to draw this this is only one good move so uh pause the video and find the drawing move for Ali Reza while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So the thing is, uh, you're gonna allow actually to exchange the knights. All other moves uh, are gonna be losing. You cannot move the the knight uh, because this pawn gonna just you know take the take the pawn and. Um, and if you take with the pawn it looks like okay the the pawn is very very close now the problem is that after exchange you're gonna lose this pawn and this is winning for black these pawns are much more powerful um with the knight together with the knight than the than this pawn with the bishop and don't cannot have the support of the king because king has to take care of the uh of the promotion of this of this pawn so black would win that the only move in the position is bishop g6 defending both of the pawns not tricky uh, this time I, I i just gave you the the riddle which is not very tricky uh but yeah still you have to calculate something bishop g3 king h3 king g5 by magnus king f3 uh we have knight b3 now bishop f7 attacking this knight knight d4 king g3 knight e2 with check king f3 knight f4 going after that pawn and now again what to play as white push that pawn this actually was a pretty okay idea that would also be a draw however uh, ali reza just said uh, i think if we exchange all the pieces that's gonna be draw as well uh but what was he right king g3 we have knight h5 and here ali reza gonna check if he was right 
Bishop h5, King h5, and and he was right. This is a draw. This is a draw. There is no way uh, for for Black if White has a you know amount of time uh, to 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 find the best uh, continuation. The problem is Alireza has 10 seconds incrementation per move, and he doesn't have any extra time. This is the problem. So uh, what would you play as White now? Uh, the correct answer is you know stay in the opposition so magnus wanna give the master class of the opposition now to alireza uh, we have king h3 alireza correctly uh, goes to the opposition if the king goes to g5 then we're gonna have king uh, g3 and so on and that's gonna be a dead draw threefold repetition so we have king h6 where to go now where to go, go now uh, alireza went for king h4 that was po that was correct move king h2 was also possible but this was possible as well uh, just for your information if you go for king g4 it's losing because now black gets to the opposition and how dangerous is that uh, king h4 now a5 and after exchanging everything you don't have a time to uh, to actually do anything okay king f2 and this pawn are gonna pro promote um, to the queen and win the game so king h4 again opposition we have king g7 and what would you play now king h5 follow the king and then win the, the game making some flanking uh, things no you cannot do flanking opposition again and you have to move this square is actually controlled so king g4 follow with the opposition king f3 and this of course um, now opposition uh, on this diagonal king g3 king g5 again king f3 king h4 and after doesn't really matter king f2 uh, king g4 uh, black gonna win the pawn in the game king e3 if you don't believe me king g3 uh, king e2 king f4 uh, and this is the last square where white can actually defend the pawn and after king d2 king e4 black of course gonna win the game this is why we keep opposition alireza play king g3 boom correct uh we have king f8 where to go very logical king f2 so uh, whenever magnus would like to go back alireza want to follow and still keep in the opposition uh, so king e7 now king e3 would be the most logical uh, but in this position, Ali Reza played king e2, and it's not losing move, it's still okay. However, Magnus Carlsen said that Ali Reza started to shaking his head, so uh, he believed that he was very nervous and he didn't want to make mistakes and some of this move can become random uh, you know you have 10 seconds uh, but if alireza just followed this pattern that would be a draw so magnus immediately goes for king e8 and now he's in the opposition so if alireza goes for example uh, this way he can jump and, and and catch him in the opposition if alireza goes this way the same thing can happen uh, but Alireza didn't go for that. He played king e3, and now we have king d7. King d3 again. So Alireza get back to the opposition. He is on the right track. Uh, we have king d6, and now this is a tricky moment. Uh, Alireza should go for d4, but it's not possible uh, because of the pawn. So what to play now? Magnus would like to play king c5. So what Alireza has to do in the next move, he has to come to c3, okay? That's the, so how he can achieve that? By two moves, d2 or c2. One of them is correct. One of them is a blunder. Which one is which one? Uh, king c2 would be the blunder because after king c6 opposition again uh, king d3 now king b5 again opposition uh on this diagonal king c3 now king c5 and as you see we already gonna have a flanking king before and uh, king e3 uh king c3 again uh and um, king e2 king d4 and of course uh this pawn is lost king g4 king e4 and this pawn gonna promote not possible the correct move is king d2 correct but alireza went for king c3 and after king c5 he resigned
Magnus catch him in the opposition and uh, huge drama and it's uh, very interesting because this is like you know basic end game uh, and even the super grandmaster Alireza Firuzia, very talented, but Magnus always try to find some weakness in his, you know, theory, in his, uh, in his play style. Uh, now he make the, the the mistake like this, and he lost the game. And Magnus said, uh, Alireza gonna stay for a while, you know. That means, you know, for many years in the top level of the chess. So he said it's good to deliver him some bad memories. And that means, of course, he gonna feel always the respect to Magnus Carlsen. Uh, even Alireza is older and older and Magnus is older and older and cannot calculate as, as great as the you know, people uh, under the 30 years old, uh, then it's still, you know, a lot of experience and uh, the younger players always will fear him. So even they can calculate better, but they will always fear him. This is how Gary Kasparov got on the top even when he was the 40 years old. Even he couldn't calculate uh, as great as before, but he still was on the top. Now, uh, I would just uh, like to tell you that uh, King D2, of course, uh, was the uh, was the way to go. Uh, if King C5, then of course we have uh, King C3, and this is a draw. Uh, king E6 doesn't work simply because King E2, and we follow the same pattern. Uh, wherever the king go, uh, we we just follow. F5 doesn't work because E takes on F5, King F5, King E3, and this of course is a theoretical draw. The king is in the front on the front of the of the pawn, so that would be a draw. But after King C5, all of this collapse, uh, Alireza gonna go for D3 and Magnus gonna flank him and win the pawn and win the game. So that was another masterclass by Magnus Carlsen. I'm thinking sometimes that he is trolling uh, against Ariantari. He make the masterclass. Uh, you can check that game if you haven't seen that masterclass. How to play with the good knight versus bad bishop. Here we have the opposition masterclass. I hope you enjoy and you understand how to keep the opposition even with some obstacles like, like these pawns. Uh, you should just always uh, find a way, uh, you know, to get to the opposition um, on your own. Don't get into the uh, wrong and losing position. Uh, if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss another games, uh, quality games on my channel, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.